everyone. <clears throat> Just popping on for our daily Facebook Live from Brio. Just wait a few minutes here for anyone else to pop on. Um, today is March 26th, 2020. We are um, from Brio Integrative Health Center located in Richmond, BC. Um, <clears throat> and we're trying to pop on live every day um, while we are instructed to be in self-quarantine here in BC and Canada. Um, seems to be in the States as well. So um, <clears throat> whoever is popping on, my name is Dr. Nitu. Um, if you are able to share that you are doing a watch party, that would be great. A watch party live with Brio. Um, just to show um, this video, we are trying to pop on every day to be of support <clears throat> and to be of service. And so, um, yeah, this is not exclusive to Brio patients. And whoever um, may need to hear any kind of tips or health offerings that we can provide um this is what we're here for during this time so please feel free to share um as much as you can so i'll wait a few more moments here just to let everyone pop on and while you're on you can just give me <clears throat> a signal that you're on just say hi or pop up a heart um let me know you're here i will be excited to see who's on <clears throat> so everyone's starting to slowly pop on ah, and seeing some thumbs up, which is awesome. So you guys can hear me okay. Um, the internet has not been the greatest today. Um, see some hearts. So if I do, um, we're trying to do every effort to make sure that I don't stall. But if I do stall, just please bear with me and um, I know it's happening. So um, putting it in the comments, uh, it, it's kind of unnecessary because I know it's happening and there's nothing I can do about it. I can just try to pause what I'm saying until it clears up. So it's been an issue all day. <clears throat> um, yeah. So I see some people popping on. Um, let's get started. Um, like I said, if you're able to share that you're um, doing a watch party with Brew, uh, today we are going to talk about um, moving lymph temp, tips to move lymph while stuck at home. So while on self quarantine, <clears throat> um, I'm assuming a lot of us are possibly more sedentary. Um, there could be a lot more sitting, there could be a lot more uh, working from home, which requires a lot of sitting at home, and then just straight to do home tasks and still, um, you know, we're not out of the house, we're not running around, we're not uh, grabbing a bunch of things or driving off to certain places, <clears throat> perhaps exercise is more difficult. Um, so there could be a lot more sitting. So Jatinder's watching, hi Jatinder. Um, there could be a lot more sitting. <clears throat> and so that's what I wanna talk about is talking about the lymph and what we can do to move the lymph, which is essential for um, keeping our immune system primed. And especially when we're talking about viruses and at this time, just keeping our immune system high. I think most people aren't really aware of what their immune system is, where it is. Dr. Karen talked a bit about it yesterday. Dr. Jeff talked about it the day before. Um, and I'm super happy to pop on again today to talk about it again. So first of all, 80% or over of our um, immune system is in our digestive tract. So it's important during this time to not just take it, you know, at self-quarantine to kind of eat what you want and just take it as a mini vacation. It's really important to really keep uh, a high quality diet, whole foods, um, whole foods meaning the, the closer it came in that form, the better it is. Um, you know, if it uh, is, a, is a kernel or like an oat flake, it's better to do that than just um, pound it into some granola bar, which has a lot of high fructose corn syrup and a ton of 
sugar in it and it comes in a box with a barcode. So far better to have the oats than to have that other barcoded product. So the closer it comes in that form, the easier it is for our bodies to recognize and the more nutrient dense it will be for us. So keep your gut healthy is really what Dr. Karen talked about yesterday um, and Dr. Jeff. <clears throat> and I want to talk even deeper about that. So when we're talking about lymph nodes, um, our immune system, we have to talk about lymph nodes. So what lymph nodes are is anytime you get sick, when we're talking about tonsils, what people don't realize is our tonsils are lymph nodes. So it's our first line of defense from the outside world. Um, when we're speaking, when we're eating, when we're talking, when we have tonsils, the tonsils are our lymph nodes and they are protecting just anything that we breathe in or eat in or take in. So the the, the lymph nodes are really, um, our tonsils are one of our first lymph nodes. Then as we get sick, a lot of people will notice in the, you know, in the past, flus, colds, whatever, they've had, um, so Sandra's watching, hi Sandra, they've had swollen lymph nodes down here and it can all be on your collarbone here. So that's lymph nodes as well. I've been sick where it's just, you know, at the back of my neck, you can feel like these moving like pearl like um swollen nodes there um i've been so sick sometimes even with eczema and infected skin where my lymph nodes all here because there's a ton of lymph nodes in our face these were even swollen here behind my ears were swollen um, especially important for women and men too the lymph nodes are underneath our un underarms as well but sub axilla are um filled with lymph nodes. So we know that is very important for breast health for women is the movement of our lymph. So, but oftentimes, like even if there's just a, been in the past a sliver and it got infected, um, there could be swollen lymph nodes here. So always checking for lymph nodes underneath here, just doing quick checks, even pulling the muscle and just kind of like feeling under, like getting right in there and feeling when, when we're sick, sometimes all of these can be inflamed too and it's both sides. And then the majority of our lymph is in the pelvis, and that can be felt too if we're sick, but in the pelvis, there's a lot of lymph nodes um, along the groin area. And inside of our digestive system, it's called gut, uh, GALT, gut-associated lymphoid tissue. So we have about 80% of our lymph nodes inside the gut. So this is veering a little bit off topic, but... It goes kind of hand in hand with um, the master class I did on Saturday about the four levels of healing and really finding out what 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 really are we healing. Um, so, for example, if somebody had chronically swollen lymph nodes and tonsils as um, a child, and back in the day, you know, when I was growing up, it was common to just remove the tonsils. But the tonsils are really a lymph node, and there are red flags. So. If they were removed, we're just removing the weed. We're removing the red flag that something is not um, right, perhaps in our gut. So it could have been a lymph node um, inflamed because the gut lymph nodes were inflamed. And this was the red flag that, hey, uh, perhaps there's something going on in the gut. Maybe there's a food that needs to be eliminated. Maybe there's a stressor. Maybe there's uh, something going on, um, bacteria uh, infection, whatever it is. Um, and then the end stage or the weed of, this, of the garden was removed, but then the deeper issue still remains intact. So 80% of our lymph nodes are in our digestive system and they're called GALT, Gut associated lymphoid tissue. So our lymph helps to clean our blood. It helps to remove pathogens, helps to remove viruses, helps to remove bacteria. Anything that is the blood needs to clean out, the lymph will do it. So you'll often notice that the lymph will get swollen when we're trying to correct um, an immune system issue, which is a good thing. Um, when it's a chronic chronic health issue, that's a different point. But when we're like talking about a finite amount of time for a cold or a flu, that's a really good thing. That means the lymph is doing its job also um, it will often mount the body will mount a fever which in a naturopathic perspective is an awesome thing um, it's a well monitored fever slowly building up and it should be efficient 12 day 12 hours or maximum but 20, 24 hour fever and that's a high efficiency fever and we love that because that's um, the body 
basically mounting an immune response to get rid of whatever is in the lymph and then we excrete it via breath perspiration bowels and urination so that's really a highly primed immune system so when we're talking about keeping our immune system healthy we cannot talk about it without talking about our lymph <clears throat> and i semi low-key love that we are on quarantine because I can teach these topics and um, it's almost like you have no choice but to comply because they're really easy and oftentimes we don't want to do them and we want to go and grab for a supplement and something that we just take versus doing because the doing takes more time and we're a society of still even when we're doing natural things we want a little bit of that magic bullet so I take the pill and I just feel better and I can go about my day whereas what I'm about to talk about today takes more time it takes more intention and it's following the laws of how the body heals so I low-key love that we are on um, lockdown so I can teach these and a low-key kind of love that perhaps you don't have access to a ton of supplements right now but fear not because these um, lymph moving techniques really don't need a lot um, it just takes intention and it takes a bit of time which I love so um, if I can get everyone to start doing this while we're in quarantine um, not only will it prime prime your immune system uh, it will be a, hopefully a mastery of something for your health that you layer on and continue um, days and months and years after the quarantine because it's just we're talking about prevention so with this virus hopefully one thing that it's taught us is that health is everything um, health is our wealth and um, without it you know if we're, we're kind of on shaky grounds with our health it's put us into this high anxious fear state um, but it, it really is not something that you need to be in a fear state about if you have constantly worked on your health and you should be in a good position so I'll tell you that the amount of work I've put into my immune system and, um, and the investment into my health has been just a non-negotiable for me I will work around anything else aside from my health that is a non non-negotiable and um, when this virus threat came up I, I had zero fear of my immune system and needing to rush to get something to prime it um, because of the work I've put into it so that's really what I want our patients to be in a state of and that's really our goal for every single patient when they walk into our clinic we're talking about their immune system right off the bat whether we say it or not um, whether we're addressing it directly or not we're always working on the immune system so a patient who's been with us even for a couple months notices that their susceptibility to just the common cold flu is radically different than um, had they not come in and um, even if we haven't even said the words immune system just note that every treatment you do is directly affecting your immune system because the body as a whole you can't separate it so lymph lymph is something I can't remember the stats right now I did have it written somewhere but lymph circuit it's a circulation um, system in our body so our blood we know circulates but uh, the lymph I believe is uh, circulates two times two and a half times more fluid than our blood so um, it, the lymph is cleaning out our blood but there is more circulation of the lymph than even blood so it is a big major system that a lot of us don't know about and in in Latin, the lymph means, uh, it's pronounced lympha, and it means it's defined as connected to water. And that's really what it is. It's, it's filtering our blood, it's taking out um, the lymphatic fluid, the plasma, um, anything that's foreign in the blood, cleaning it, and um, eliminating what's not supposed to be there. So Jatinder said her tonsils were removed when she was three. Yeah, that was common practice back then. So you have to be even a little bit more diligent than about your immune system because that first line of defense is not really there. But fear not because 80% is in our gut so we can optimize the rest so your body as a whole unit is functioning even better than um, someone who hasn't addressed it and has full tonsils available so the lymph all it doesn't circulate like the blood the blood is always in constant circulation the lymph only circulates upwards so we have to do um, actions that move the 
and pump the blood upwards in order to uh, circulate and um, yeah, to, to pump our lymph. So um, how does the lymph also like to move? The lymph likes to move when there's temperature differences. The lymph is moving when there is muscle pumping, so a lot more movement. We're at home right now, so we're not pumping a lot of lymph. We're in warm houses, so we're not in the hot, cold, hot, cold, inside, outside. We're not typically doing that, so there's not a lot of lymph moving. And um, lymph also moves when there is uh, like a, a, a up and down movement, like a trampoline. It's not so much uh, skipping, um, but it is that trampoline because you're jumping and then the trampoline goes under and then goes up. So when you have that under and up movement, that moves lymph. So um, we're not getting a lot of that. So there's there's three techniques I wanted to talk about that can promote lymph movement while at home. So I always use the body as, as poetry. So it's, what it's saying to us inside will manifest in our outside world. So if the lymph is stuck, I would also always encourage, look at a little bit of the mental, emotional, how you're feeling, what's really going on in your reality, because chances are, if your lymph is stuck, even if you know it or not, but you'll feel a stuckness in the outer world too. Um, whether it's stuckness in just your thoughts on the quarantine, whether it's being a little bit more reflective of, um, you know, do I love my profession? Do I love where my life is heading? Am I living my true purpose? purpose, things like that. There is a stuckness somewhere. Um, I wanted to do this pottery class. I never allowed myself to do it. You know, little things like that, little like dreams that you never really even allowed to kind of surface. So if there's a stuck of the lymph, there is likely going to be a stuckness in the outside world. So always try to keep the mental and emotional in mind too, as you're doing the physical body, because we're all of it. We're a mental body, a physical body, a spiritual body, and all all of it has to kind of be addressed. So think about the outside world and if you're feeling stuck because that's a symbol for inside. So the first thing I want to talk about for um, moving lymph is about that upward circulation. So if any of you have ever been to a lymph drainage massage, it is um, a very kind of, I think a more uh, additional skilled technique. So you have regular RMT, that school, that training, but then to do lymph massage is an additional training on top of that. I think Linda, our RMT, does a little bit of that. I do Bowen um, there Therapy, which is um, it, it does help move lymph but it's not considered a lymph drainage treatment but it totally works on the lymphatic system and the way Linda works with her visceral massage it also helps to move the lymph however in this time where you're not able to get to uh, lymph drainage or a lymph massage we can mimic it at home. So the first thing I wanna talk about is dry skin brushing. So dry skin brushing is, is exactly what it sounds like. If you can, um, if you have a sea foam sponge, that is the most ideal. So a sea foam sponge is quite porous. It has bigger pores and um, Th those pores when we put them against the skin is the ideal kind of motion or sensation for the lymph to get activated. If you don't have a seafoam sponge, you can order it online because um, still the major websites are still shipping out things. So you could get a seafoam sponge from Amazon. Um, if you are shopping at, um, say, an organic store that's still open I, and Whole Foods I know is still open, I do, I do think that they have the seafoam sponge there. Um, and worst case scenario, you can use um, a tea towel or a little face towel. So what you want to do is start at the feet so I won't show you because I'm on the Facebook live but let's say this is my foot you want to just take light light strokes and move up the foot up the leg and all the way up to the pelvis so you're starting at the foot you're doing light light strokes and it's going all the way up the knee all the way up the thigh all the way up the abdomen and then to the heart and then you do the second leg and you can even do the bottom of the foot light light feather like strokes 
all the way up, all the way up the pelvis. So you're doing the whole abdomen and always to the heart. So the lymph drains in the heart. It's always upward circuit, circulation to um, the heart. Then you would do the arm and it's light, light strokes all the way to the heart. And then you do the other arm, light, light strokes all the way to the heart. You could also do the neck. So it's just light, light strokes down to the heart and light, light strokes. So it's always to hear any motion of the lymph. You, when you're doing dry skin brushing, it's always to hear. So the lymph is most active at night. So you would want to take this opportunity to do the uh, dry skin brushing at nighttime. So right before bed, uh, it could be right before you put your PJs on, do it without clothes. You could uh, just quickly grab the brush and then do um, the dry skin brushing. It should literally take about 45 seconds. And if you do it every night consistently without fail, you will feel the body starting to shift. It is almost like a tingling, um, uh, energizing sensation. And it is so simple, but it's just a little intention every night that you can um, add to your routine to move the lymphatics. So if you've ever been to a lymph um, drainage and massage therapist, when they're touching, they're doing like light, light strokes on the skin. And it's similar, it's almost like they're not even touching you and then the whole lymph can drain. And so when we're really like retaining a lot of water, uh, that's often the lymph that's, that's, that water is being retained. So you'll notice maybe you'll lose more water um, via urination, the, the bowel movements are improved, but something will start to shift. So this is a simple technique that you can do every single night. Make sure that you get under the arms because there's a ton of lymph nodes there. Make sure you get the pelvis, there's a ton of lymph nodes there, over the abdomen and then always to the heart. So that's dry skin brushing. Does anyone have any questions about that? If it makes sense, throw up some hearts. Um, and it's just because that little touch, that trigger, that little feather-like stroke on the skin triggers the lymph movement. So it's just that little touch, that's what triggers the lymph to move. Does that make sense? There's some hearts. Yes, Donna says it makes sense. Some hearts. So the lymph needs to move. We gotta move it in order to keep the immune system high um, and active. It needs to move, and this is one simple way. There, there's no excuse. Um, you know, people are running out and grabbing immune boosting supplements and herbs, and that's all great, and I'm totally for that. But uh, we gotta move the lymph. So if you're boosting up your immune system, first of all, do you know what you're actually boosting up? And can whatever the immune system is fighting get the stuff out of your system? So when you're trying to boost up your immune system, you are trying to get it out too. Uh, yes, so Jutinder, I was gonna say that. Jutinder is asking, can we use the brushes? I believe they are for dry skin brushing. Yeah, so there's also a theory of using the dry skin brushing, which is, I think, a little bit more harder to get the dead skin off because the skin is thought of as the third kidney. So when you get that dead skin and you're circulating, um, you are detoxifying. So that would be a little bit of a harder movement. But if you take that same brush and do the feather-like strokes on the skin, you can definitely do that. So just make sure that it is feather-like strokes. Um, a sea foam sponge is the most optimal but work with what you have right now. So if you have nothing, then use like a little face cloth. It, it will work. Um, and if you have that dry skin brush, do that. Uh, number two is probably, does that make sense to everyone? Dry skin brushing, 45 seconds at night. It's like, couldn't be simpler. So Jutinder says that makes sense. Does that sound like something that you guys would do? It's so simple. It really makes a huge difference and it's just keeping everything moving. Um, number two for um, um, mo moving the lymph, this is probably my ultimate favorite. Um, so there's a lot of hearts, so I think that makes sense to everyone. Number two is my ultimate favorite is castor oil packs. 
This is my ultimate favorite. So when I was seeing my naturopath, um, it was a non-negotiable. He uh, closed his practice to um, the everyday public. He was a naturopath, but he closed it to the general public and only took on chronic cases. And I was lucky enough to get in with him. And should a patient refuse to do castor oil packs, he wouldn't treat them. So it shows a intention and dedication, and that's how much he believes in it, really. Um, and thirdly, it gets you to sit down at the end of the night and be pinned down so you can slow down your night routine. And um, it, it's easier than running around, running around, and then getting into bed and just expecting your body to comply and fall into deep sleep. So. It does a few things, but the casserole pack is one of my favorites for um, moving the lymph. So again, 80% of your lymph nodes are in the digestive system, the gut-associated lymphoid tissue, GALT. And um, again, one of the ways that we move lymph is through a squeezing technique, and sometimes it's the muscles, so walking, movement, jumping, all that stuff moves lymph. But also, when you do castor oil, it triggers a kind of peristaltic reaction of the gut, and so the lymph move, um, they're triggered to move. So you, you are stimulating almost like an internal um, lymph kind of um, massaging or um, kind of pumping action with the castor oil. So what you do, if you don't have this at home right now, Brio is still open, you can call in and get a net to put some aside and you can run in and grab it. You could also get it online. I've seen um, castor oil packs, you can get the flannel, you can get the oil, um, so you can still order it. And if you already have it at home because you're one of my patients who have um, been doing them and you kind of fell off doing them, start them again. So what you need is a piece of unbleached cotton flannel is the most ideal. When you do a castor oil pack, you want to fold it to fold thickness. So this is a bit large. I could kind of cut this in half and then this would be my one piece and I could you know, use half of it. But for the purpose of this demo, let's say this is my piece. And then from above the, under the rib cage to above the hip bones, this is your entire area to treat. Then what you do, this is all washed, ready to go, washed with um, eco-friendly detergent. You take the castor oil. So you, when you purchase castor oil, you want it to be hexane free. So you can't just grab it from shoppers or London Drugs, which they do have it, the little castor oils, um, but they're topical for like joint inflammation, which it does do that. Um, it helps with that. But when we're talking about lymph and putting it on our um, abdomen and to be absorbed in we want to get a really really high quality so you want to get uh, hexane free and if you can get even organic that would be incredible so what you do the oil is really thick I don't know if you can see that it's quite thick so I just open it up I drizzle about two tablespoons of castor oil onto this flannel sheet so the castor oil goes directly onto the flannel then you smoosh it around just to get it um, attempt to get it evenly distributed then I just kind of like it has to be on bare skin so I would tuck it into my bottom of my PJs flip this up then you put an old um, towel on top then a hot water bottle on top of that and you just sit there for about 45 minutes so as you're lying there 60 minutes is even more ideal as you're lying there the heat of the hot water bottle will help um, distribute through the flannel and to the oil and it will help to absorb through the digestive uh, the abdomen and what you're doing is it's directly absorbing and it's helping to stimulate the peristalsis of the gut and what will happen is your lymph of your um, gut will start to move and pump and um, as a side effect you're moving your entire lymph so you're stimulating the lymph movement to the heart your bowel movements should be enhanced so it should be a, a more complete bowel movement um, more efficient so eliminate efficiently and also daily so it should be daily easy to pass 
and that is just a non-negotiable for a highly primed immune system there must be a daily bowel movement because whatever you're boosting your immune system to do you got to get that stuff out so it's kind of like um you know riling up a robber but the house that robber that's broken in but the house is locked so without the bowels being cleared you, you know it's not really doing the best job when you've bumped up your immune system you gotta bump up your immune system with whatever you're doing but we gotta get that stuff out and that's moving the lymph so you're lying there for 60 minutes and then after 60 minutes is up you it should be just like a thin film on here that you started with so you should be able to just give it a quick wipe what I do then is I fold this back up you don't wash it and I put it in like a glass snap top container one of those that you would get at like um, Canadian Tire or whatever you should have them for food for storage I put the flannel piece in there, you don't wash it, I snap it, I just keep all this stuff in a tray under my bed, the next night you open up this flannel piece, you don't wash it, take the castor oil again, drizzle again, um, about a tablespoon and a half to two on here, <laughs> smoosh it around, put it onto the bare skin and again with the old towel and the hot water bottle. And you, and you do that repeated nights. So if your immune system, you're really, really concerned about it, do it every night. Um, but, and if you, you know, if you haven't really focused on your lymph yet, you got to be careful because you might get headaches when you first start doing it. You might feel nauseous. Um, you might feel like your sleep is agitated. That's how powerful it is. You, you, we can't see it cause it's just being absorbed in and it seems so simple, but it's so extremely powerful that it could cause a little bit of agitation. Um, if that happens, you just do less time. You have to maybe start with 15 minutes. Uh, 30 minutes and then slowly work your way up to uh, 60 minutes I think the most sensitive uh, patient I had was we had to put a little bit of castor oil on a cotton swab and put it um, <clears throat> into their navel and we worked over the years to start to move that lymph and I can't even imagine what would have happened to their health had they not done that but they did the work and they got up to a pack um, that was you know 45 minutes and so if you're able to do it every night, great, um, especially during the quarantine, I think is extremely important. We gotta keep your bowel, bowels moving, we gotta keep the lymph circulating upwards, um, and we gotta keep the gut healthy, which stores 80% of our lymph. You don't wash this flannel sheet, but after about three months, it gets pretty, pretty um, saturated. So you'll notice that every night as you add the oil, you kind of almost have to, have to add less and less oil because it's pretty saturated. And just the saturated um, sheet will have maybe enough and you just add a little bit to it. And so after about three months, you just check out this piece and you get a new piece of flannel and then you keep going. And this is something that you can do for years. I think I did it for maybe five years. I did it like four times a week. And uh, with my naturopath, it was just a non-negotiable. And if I wanted to be treated by him, wasn't even a question on top of all the under remedies and everything that he did with me, um, the castor oil and the home techniques, it was just a non-negotiable. So this one, if you're at home, you have more time, you're stuck there. Every night, again, lymph is most active at night. Try to do it before bed. It really helps with sleep. It helps to calm that monkey brain. You can, um, so Carolyn's just joined, welcome Carolyn. You can, um, it, it helps with the monkey brain. You can journal at this time. You can deep breathe at this time. You can just listen to some meditative music at this time. Um, you can turn, the, make sure the TV's turned off, turn the lights down low, and just start to unwind your nervous system and including this castor oil pack. Uh, is it okay to use young, longer than three months if it's still in a sealed container? Yeah, so Jatinder's asking if you can use this piece longer than three months. Definitely. Um, so you can use it definitely longer than three months if it's not super soiled. So usually um, 
you can feel it when it's getting kind of uh, really, really just saturated and kind of raggedy. You just get a new one. If it still kind of looks fresh, you can definitely use it again. Um, the castor oil does not need to be put in the fridge. It won't go rancid. So you can also smell for it too. If it smells kind of moldy or rancid, just check it out. Don't even take a chance and get a new one. Um, so that that's really my advice. But yeah, if it, if it feels kind of new, then keep using it and there shouldn't be a problem with it. Um, longer than three months, you could go for four for sure. So that that's a good question. Does anyone else have questions about the castor oil pack? Because it is a game changer for immune system. Most people don't know what the immune system is and what we're sharing with you over these Facebook Lives is like total gems. Um, it is wisdom bombs because everyone's talking about this virus but they're not really sharing like what do you do to enhance the immune system? It's not just about having a virus and staying away from people. It's about having a highly primed uh, immune system so that should you come into contact with, I'm not talking about this specific virus, but anything in the world, um, you're able to, um, you're able to, with, you know, override it with your immune system. Oh, good question. So Carolyn asked with big fibroids in a period during your menses, this will, as the lymph is, is flowing more, it's not the best time to do a castor oil pack with the menstrual cycle. So if you have your period, uh, try to just avoid those few days. And my friend Hardeep just popped on, so I'm gonna say hi to her. Thanks for joining Deep. Um, but during your period, just, just don't do the cycle, um, or don't do the castor oil packs. Do the dry skin brushing. And um, the next one I'm gonna talk about, I wouldn't do that either during the menses, but um, just have your flow. For women, menses is a huge flow. I'm sure there's a lot more lymph flowing at that time anyways, so just leave it. But in regards to fibroids and doing the castor oil pack in between having your menstrual cycle, I would still do it. I think it's a great idea. If it's causing you pain, then just do less time um, but it's a great treatment especially if there's fibroids so that's a good kind of um, point that I forgot to make is just don't do it while you have your period dry skin brushing is totally fine to do while you have your period that's a non non issue does that all make sense does everyone um, give some hearts um, I'm totally running over again uh, I just wanted to pop on for 20 minutes but I want to do this one last one before I kind of sign off because I wanted to do um, three points to enhance our lymphatic um, yeah and so Hardeep says that I found castor oil packs relieving when I had fib fibroids definitely it is if it's soothing then great totally keep up with them and I can see for some women if they're extremely large it could be painful so you got to be careful because it's it's gonna move stuff and it may not feel the best but if it's if it's soothing to you for sure do them just don't do them with your period because it can make your cycle heavier third point for moving lymph and while you're at home might as well try to experiment with this because it is awesome um, so another, I mentioned it at the beginning, but another way that lymph moves is to hot, cold uh, jumps. And um, when we're in our hot house all the time, is it safe to do after a C-section? If this, if the, um, um, if the incision point, uh, whether it's um, hysterectomy or a C-section, if the incision is totally healed, the stitches are all, you know, removed safely everything like deep level healing for sure you can totally do um the castor oil packs with a c-section um if had a c if you had a c-section and if you've had a hysterectomy um a lot of times hysterectomies now are just little tiny little incisions with lap laparoscopic surgery uh either way just wait for it to totally heal at that deep level and then you can do castor oil packs for sure. So the third one is um, hot cold jumps is what moves the lymph. So if we're in our hot warm house all the time, we're sleeping in a warm bed, our lymph is kind of stuck. We're sitting at home more, we're stuck at home. Our lymph is stuck, our life feels stuck. Um, a way to move it is hot cold jumps. So in Finland, I believe it's Finland, the, their doctor is um, 
jumping into the snow and in the sauna back and forth so what they'll do is be in the sauna and then go into the snow um, and then back into the sauna and back into the snow always finishing with cold so that's really what we want to mimic here and I did this for like months and months I haven't done it recently but I'm about to embark on it again because I feel the need for um, just that lymph movement um, as I talked about in one of the lives before we closed the clinic and um, temporarily to help flatten the curve, I can feel everyone's anxiety and my skin just broke up, broke out into huge eczema. I'm still healing from it. Um, so I didn't um, do the, I wasn't doing the hot cold showers then, but I, I felt my body was so on fire. I wanted to start them again. So this brings me back to um, prompting myself to do them again too. And when I started, it was like, it was hard. I'm going to say it was hard, but it was because my mental was m mostly chattering. Um, so what it is, is hot, cold showers. You take your normal shower um, and the last two minutes, pump the water up to a little bit hotter. And then you stand under that water for about two minutes. And then the last 30 seconds, and if you can't do 30, start with five seconds, start with 10 but turn all that hot water off and stand under it in cold water. So you wanna do your front. If you can turn to your back, that'd be great. If you wanna put your head under, great, but that might take a little bit more time to get a little bit more comfortable with. Um, one caution is if you have low blood pressure, don't do it or consult your doctor first. Even if you have high blood pressure, be careful, consult your doctor. I wouldn't suggest doing it when you're on your period because I think that um, when women have our menses, we just shouldn't agitate. We should just let our bodies be because they're going to this deep process. Um, so just don't do it then. Um, if you just have a predisposition to feeling a little bit faintish, just don't do it. Um, if there's any heart circulation, stuff just don't do it focus on the other two but hot cold showers are amazing for moving lymph so then you can finish with the cold or if you want you can go back to one more minute or two more minutes of hot ish again and then go back to cold and always finish so that jump from high so you have your normal shower and then you've gotten to higher whatever your body can stand not burning higher temperature and then that drop to cold will also circulate the lymph immediately and you can feel it coming out of the shower you just feel so alive you feel hot i feel warm immediately and just totally totally rejuvenated um like i can't believe i can't even explain it your immune system is primed when you're doing this. Um, the thought is that I'll wait till summer to do this, but I did this all throughout winter mostly, and it was incredible um, for my immune system. And then through summer, it just seemed like a breeze. It seemed a bit easy. I really, really had to get over the mental chatter. And then I saw this um, TED talk about the cold shower. It wasn't from Wim Hof. Um, I've actually been to a Wim Hof set, uh, a seminar in person and seen him. It was um, another person who did a TED talk about how um, the cold, it triggers the same fear part of the brain. It must be the reptilian brain or the amygdala. Um, the same fear part of the brain as any outer fearful event. So when we can handle that fear, um, when that fear happens in the outside world, we're more primed to be able to remain calm through it. So if you can remain calm through a cold shower, um, it is amazing training for just day-to-day -day life. So when I've done it, I've gotten myself up to, I think I do it 90 seconds, uh, full on, no hot water, just totally cold. Cold. and I'll just do like the front to the back go back to the front and then finish and um, I really don't even feel it anymore and that's just because of training of doing it over and over and over again I know when I first started I would avoid if I could taking a shower on the weekends like all day because I knew that I was gonna go in there and have to do it um, I would have mental negotiations with myself like oh you don't have to do it today and just get in the shower but it was like a trick to get myself into the shower and then when I was in there it was a non-negotiable it had to be done so um, it's it's really a mind training and it really is true if you can calm yourself through that fear when you're faced with the fear in the outside world you are a little bit more calmer and I'm not talking about an, an attack on our personal um, safety I'm talking about 
like what we're going through right now or just you know um maybe like a little shocking event that happened in life um in the outside world slamming on your brakes a little bit quicker whatever it was you're able to deal with that in a far calmer state the key to the hot cold shower though is you have to breathe so even in the rest of your shower as you're getting ready for it do your deep breathing. It also calms that monkey brain, so it's no coincidence that that brain is calmer after doing um, the hot cold showers. But you gotta breathe, and if you clench up and hold your breath, that shower is damn cold. <laughs> like damn cold and it is pure hell but if you're breathing throughout it you can handle it and it's just like it's hitting your skin and it's nothing so that no breathing is also a mirror for how we handle fear states in um, everyday life if you're contracted and holding your breath that fear is magnified but if you're breathing circulating allowing a relaxation not not in a contracted state we can let fear flow through our body and we can transmute it and be an alchemist um but if you're contracted that fear is just like a thousand times gonna hit you harder gonna hit you so hard and impactful um where it doesn't have to be that way and so uh, hot cold showers are training for that too if you can relax through a hot cold shower the cold portion um it, it just doesn't feel as cold so that is another life training so all these things are life trainings for what we're kind of going through this 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 virus this pandemic is like the um, final exam for all these little trainings that we try to put into place here at brio so um it's really just like how do you handle life how do you show up in um in in the in the face of fear and anxiety um if your body is able to transmute it you don't have to be in a place of fear and anxiety you can go through it with peace um and still take take marked action so you can take action be totally present but you fear is not always necessary so moving the lamp that's what i wanted to talk about today um i have to actually jump on and see a patient um right after this so i should really wrap up but dry skin brushing try that castor oil packs hot cold showers there are three three powerful ways to move lymph while you're stuck at home and uh, two of them well all three of them really don't require a lot of um, um, stuff at home it's very minimal like a, a dry skin brush if you have it and castor oil requires flannel and um, the oil if you have it hot cold showers if that's all you have access to right now try it but you gotta breathe you gotta keep breathing and trust me if you hold your breath it is a pure hell um, awesome information Kelly says thank you so much so I hope you guys try it if you do try it just post in the Facebook group I want to hear all about it Carolyn says thank you so much such a gift you guys are so so welcome um, and Tinder says thank you you're so welcome I hope you guys try it Donna says great info I hope you guys try it um, I keep saying that but like I'm so excited about lymph movement it is a game changer and especially when we're talking about um, immune system um, Julie says thank you very much for the info we'll do yeah post and share you know like let everyone know and it gives everyone um, a, a kind of space to also share and we can start a little bit of a dialogue um, and you'll know more about the immune system than most people so when you do stuff like this you, you'll know more than most people um, and Nero says thank you this is my this is new info and I will try it yeah try one at a time get used to it get it under your belt and then try the next one try the next when we have time um, and even after we go back into our busy lives my hope is that these there is a slowing down and we can incorporate these too so uh, keep incorporating them because this is what it's all about um, like I said you don't have to approach a pandemic with fear it can be met with peace and confidence that you know what you've put into your immune system and um, you, you have trust and faith in your body that um, it knows how to navigate life, really. Um, that's really what it's all about. So thank you everyone for joining again. Uh, feel free to share. Um, if you need more info, we're still open for telephone consults and video consults. I have to jump on one right now. And you'll notice in the newsletter that we only have topics up until April 2nd. So I'm gonna be working on um, 
two more weeks of topics for Facebook Lives for us. If you're waiting on my schedule, again, please everyone who's going to sign up, I think it's going to be the week of April 6th, but watch Net Netflix. Um, and get season three of Chef's Table, watch the first one um, with Jiang uh, Quan, and we'll talk about that. So I want you guys to watch it and write down three points of what you learned from watching her uh, Chef's Table episode and how you are taking what you learn and incorporating into your life during the quarantine. And um, we'll talk about it and it'll be more of a kind of a sharing um, Facebook Live. And then I have another awesome one in the mix for you guys. Um, it just popped into my head today to do it. Um, I will do that um, schedule, but that should be in a week or two. So it's going to be an awesome one. So stay tuned for my next few. And then also Dr. Jeff, Karen, and Vanessa will be back on. And yeah, hopefully these are helpful for you, for you guys. We're just trying to be a service and there's so much you can share. We finally get everyone at home. So there's so much home stuff that you can do that really, really primes your immune system that people just mostly don't have time to do. And now we do. So thanks everyone. I'm gonna pop on and see a patient and um, finish up the day here. Thank you. Thanks for joining.